Good afternoon, everyone. Um, while we're waiting for our colleagues to join, um, if you'd like to use the translation, um, you can click on the QR code and then select the language that you'd like to have today's session uh, translated into. Um, and if you can put into the chat where you're joining from, it's terrific um, and it's fantastic to see that we've got people already from all across the globe. Uh, lots of my colleagues from Australia, but also I can see that we've got Tamara from Belgrade um, and also Anya from Sweden, uh, Leili from Iran. Uh, so uh, uh, fantastic to have so many people joining us today. So we'll just give everyone a couple more minutes to join because um, I know sometimes connections take a little while. Um, Samira from Thailand, uh, welcome. Um, Andreas from Hamburg. Oh, Jerome from Paris. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, well, I think we might get started because um, I know some of you may have meetings to go to, um, but I'd like to welcome you to this IFLA Strategies consultation session, so a town hall session that we're conducting today. Um, and I guess this is part of our commitment to uh, communicating with our members and volunteers and stakeholders, but also providing you the opportunity to provide some feedback. So our session will go for about an hour and there's plenty of opportunity uh, for feedback and, and asking questions as we go along. But we are particularly excited to be sharing with you our new IFLA strategy and also talking through with you today the opportunity on how you can provide um, feedback in the coming weeks as well. So we go to the next slide. Um, again, just a reminder, if you'd like to use the translation service that's available, just click on the, um, the QR code and select the language that you'd like to have the event translated into, um, and that will make it much easier for you. So today, um, two main speakers are myself. Um, my name is Vicky McDonald, and it is my great privilege to be the State Librarian and CEO. Oh, sorry, I'm in work mode. I'm sitting at my desk. It is, of course, my privilege to be the IFLA president uh, for 2023 to 2025. And joining me today is the IFLA Secretary General. Hi, Sharon, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, so my name is Sharon Memmers, and um, I was just commenting yesterday at the uh, town hall we did that on the 1st of June, I will have been in post for one year exactly, which is quite incredible how quickly time flies when you're having fun. So um, it, it's a great pleasure to be here as well and to join you, Vicky. Thank you. And thank well, you. Congratulations. Today. So congratulations, Sharon. It's uh, certainly the 12 months has gone very quickly and it's been fantastic to have you with us. Also joining us on the session today is Stephen Weiber, uh, the Director of um, External Affairs, and, and Stephen will come in when we go to the Minty sessions and, and moderate those feedback sessions with you today. But let's just talk a little bit through how today's session will work. Um, today's session is really all around giving you an outline of what the new IFLA strategy is. Um, we assume that you have had an opportunity to take a, a quick look at the strategy and what we're going to focus on is how we've got to where we are what inputs we've had and how you can unpack the strategy so that you're in a really uh, strong position to be able to provide feedback um, this strategy has been developed so far based on the feedback that we've received and we're very keen to get feedback through these town hall sessions this week as we work towards finalizing the session we do encourage you to use the Q&A function to ask any questions or provide us comment, um, and we'll respond to those questions uh, as we work through. Um, and I guess the main thing to remember is if something doesn't make sense to you, do ask because it may not make sense to anyone else as well. But really the overall purpose of today's session is really to put you in a strong position to be able to respond to the survey that we have open at the moment about the strategy. So let's um, let's take a look at where how we've got to the point we are. Uh, and you may remember um, as my first speech as IFLA president back in Rotterdam at the at the Congress, 
I made a commitment that one of the activities that the current governing board would progress during their term was the development of a new strategy. And we're certainly well on the way to that. So the strategy will cover from 2024 uh, until 2029. So back in October through to December, we undertook a number of pulse surveys and we asked our members um, about their experiences with the strategy, what they wanted for the future, their, their hopes, their ambitions as well. And all of that information, the inputs that we received through those pulse surveys is available on our website as well so that you can take a look at that. When the governing board met in The Hague in December, we looked at those results and um, I had a workshop and we worked through a proposal and agreement on some change pathways that we wanted to look at and, and view as part of the development of the strategy. Then again, from January to March, we sought your views and uh, opened it up for consultation. And we've done a number of surveys on those change pathways. Uh, the results have been analysed and published, and from that, a draft strategy has been prepared. And that draft strategy was reviewed at the April Governing Board meeting when the Governing Board met in The Hague, and we're calling that our draft zero of the strategy, and that's the strategy that we're consulting on at the moment. So as you can see on this roadmap, during May and June, there will be consultation with members and volunteers, and that's what we're working through today. We had a, uh, a town hall yesterday and we have another one in the next two days as well, uh, which I'll be leading together with Sharon. And then there'll also be another session in French, uh, which Leslie Weir will lead with Sharon as well. So plenty of opportunities for that consultation to help. Um, but I guess I really want to highlight that the, the governing board when we met in April were really enthusiastic about this strategy. We feel that it sets us on the right path for the future and we particularly like the context and the structure of the, of the strategy and that's what you will see as we progress through as well. So let's have a look at what we're going to do today. So the goals for today's session is to outline to you the structure of the draft strategy and you will see immediately that it is a little bit different from the current strategy, which was developed through the Global Vision Workshops. Then Sharon will take us through the proposed new vision and also the impact areas and the enabler that is in the, uh, the new draft strategy. And then I'll wrap up at the end and talk about what are the next steps and the opportunities for you to participate as well. So um, we'll just go to the next slide. So our goals for today. Um, so overall, we want, we're looking for a strategy that supports IFLA in realising its potential as the global organisation for libraries. And I think if we could just go to the next slide, please, Stephen. Thanks. So as you can see, uh, overall, essentially what we're seeking to achieve is a strategy that supports IFLA in its work in supporting libraries at a global level. And I think the thing to remember about strategies is that everybody uses strategies in a different way, particularly in a federation with the size and makeup of IFLA. The IFLA team at headquarters will certainly use the strategy to drive the work and the activities that they undertake throughout the year. I know that sections will refer back to the strategy in developing their action plans. Library associations may refer back to the strategy as they're planning their uh, strategies as well. And I know in libraries, um, and like the institution that I lead, we look at the IFLA strategy when we're doing our scanning, our environmental scan in developing our own strategy. So I guess a strategy is different things to different people, but I think there's always bits that you can take from it as well. And the strategy, as I said, does have a, a four year time frame as well. As I mentioned earlier, today is really all about um, sharing with you what we've done, where we've got to, and really putting you in a strong position to respond to the survey, which is already open. And I'll talk a little bit about more of that in the, in the wrap up session. So if we go to the next slide, um, when we commenced the work on the strategy, we asked our members and volunteers how they were using our current strategy. So we thought it was really important in developing a new strategy that we understand how people actually do use our strategy. So this, um, this particular slide shows you uh, the response to key comments. Uh, the blue is agree and red is disagree. 
And what you can see from here is that there was a really strong awareness of the IFLA strategy. And I guess you can expect that because uh, people who are answering this survey are probably already engaged with IFLA, their members, members of our sections um, as well. But I think what's interesting to see there is next to that awareness slide is the regular reference to the strategy is somewhat lower than that awareness. So we've certainly got a bit of a disconnect between awareness and the use of the strategy. And I think that's really given us a prompt within the governing board and IFLA team to think about how can we make it more relevant to people so that they are actually referring to our strategy. So this slide is it's quite one dimensional. And I think it's also really important if you go onto the website and look at the results and drill down into them, that you'll see that the responses to these questions varies very much between regions. We can see that some regions have a much higher use of the IFLA strategy than in other regions. Um, and I guess, as I said earlier, the strategy means different things to different people. So people do use it in different ways. Did you want to make a comment there, Sharon? I, I thought you, I could see you. No, no, no. I was nodding my head in agreement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So the next slide... Um, was really where we asked our members and volunteers, what do you actually want the next strategy to do? So having worked with the current strategy for a number of years, what are you looking for in the next strategy? And I can, as you can see on this slide, a really strong response around the vision and actions, that there's a connection between the vision and actually achieving things and actions. Also a strong response around it being adaptable and adoptable. And, and I think that goes back to my earlier point. We all take something different from the strategy. And whether you're working in a public library or a university library, you can adapt what's in the IFLA strategy to the work that you're doing. And similarly, if you're in an IFLA section, it has relevance to you as well. So um, there's a number of different criteria there or change pathways um, as to how um, members have responded to that. And we can drill down in the next slide to some more of that information as well. So again, um, the first one there, making a stronger connection between vision and action. So that vision to actions, 47.8% um, response. So quite a really high priority by our members. Similarly, it's been the need for it to be adaptable and adoptable by members, volunteers and librarians everywhere is at the 39.7%. Uh, bringing out libraries' contribution to human development and resilience. Uh, again, a very high score and being relevant to all people and regions, so 35%. And I think that's really pleasing to see that high score, particularly when you think of us as a federation that covers libraries and library and information workers across the globe. Um, so, And you can see there the, the response across those 10 change pathways as well. So if we then move then to the structure of our draft strategy, and I might invite Sharon to take us through this section, please, Sharon. Thanks very much, Vicky. Um, so listening to what Vicky has uh, talked about, you know, where, where is this taking us? What's the result of this analysis, your responses, your input? Um, well, I think it's just worth, worth noting that um, some of the principles behind what we were doing is that, um, you know, we haven't ignored the previous strategy. There is a strong connection. We had something like 32,000 um, inputs into the last strategy. We're not going to ignore that, but I think what we've tried to do is to take on board some of the, um, of the comments, the feedback, and I suppose also just my approach coming in as a new Secretary General and having, you know, new president, that I think we we both felt, Vicky, and I, I hope we'd agree on this, is that the last strategy was very much about these are the things we're doing, um, the activity, and what we've tried to do is to focus much more on the actual impact and the difference that we can make. Um, because I think both Vicky and I are quite um, focused on, on metrics, on KPIs, on real impact. So that, I think, is a, a really important um, point. So it, it's building on that, focusing on impact, focusing on the difference we can make, and also how explaining really how we 
contribute to how libraries can contribute to to wider goals and i think that's an important point so those change pathways we certainly focused on the top ones but that doesn't mean to say we ignored the others we tried to incorporate all of those because they were all all important um we tried to have something which was much clearer so you'll see that although there is um there there are sort of details underneath those of you who've really read the strategy we've tried to have a a, a summary a strategy on a page so you can you can just have it up there and look at it and quickly get a picture of what it is that we're trying to um, achieve and those of you familiar with the concept of a theory of change will recognize I think the visuals so starting really with a vision and the impact looking at how we contribute you know what are the activities that contribute to the outcomes and also looking at the enablers you know how do we make it happen and looking at the KPIs and the measures. So I think you'll be familiar with that if, you, if you've worked with theories of change before. And we hope that it is, um, and it's something relatively short, but also something which is adaptable and can be relevant everywhere. And that was, I think, a very important point. And the idea is that we'll have a, um, this strategy, but underneath it, in order to respond to rapidly evolving contexts and landscapes nobody imagined when we wrote the original strategy when well, the original strategy the strategy of 2019 to 24 that there would be a pandemic that would throw much off course so underneath this strategy we'll have more detailed work plans and also it gives it a little more space i think to sort of creativity of the different sections and units to look at how they can work with this and importantly i would say is that what we have tried to do as ifla is to be a little more behind the scenes a little bit more of the enabler headquarters there is critical but it's actually about empowering and enabling the field and really working with our volunteers and members um so that i think is the kind of overall um structure i hope uh, if we could look at the next slide then perhaps stephen so the idea is, of course, a starting point underneath this is very much that, um, if you like, international is, is obviously underpinning everything. The, the point of IFLA is that we are the international um, federation. And so this should, we hope, resonate with everybody who has an interest in, in international dimensions and learning. So I think that that's, a, again, a very important point. That is a starting point. And I think that the that sharper focus on IFLA and where we add value to your international efforts is, I think, incredibly important. And we've tried to explain how to read and use the strategy. And I hope that, again, that's really sort of helpful um, for everybody. Um, next slide, Stephen, please. So this is how it looks, as I say, um, if you are familiar with um, a theory of change, then you'll you'll recognize this idea of the vision at the top and how we achieve it, the various impact areas, um, what IFLA does to can do to, to make that happen, the enablers and the success measures. So it, again, just to re-emphasize, we're moving away from the strategy that simply sets out what we do to one that sets out the difference that we want to make. So from, if you like, from doing to achieving, from activity to impact. Um, next slide. And what about the substance? Well, let's start, as we say, from the top. Um, so let's talk about the vision and hopefully uh, go to the next slide. So the vision that we have um, gone for and is, is short, sustainable futures for all through knowledge and information. And certainly when we shared that with the governing board and we went through it and we analyzed it, I think that everybody responded very positively and enthusiastically. And, and certainly um, the town hall yesterday, I think um, there was a lot of support for this. It's short, <laughs> it's easy to remember. I confess that um, the, the last vision, I struggled sometimes to remember the right order for the words. Whereas this one, I remember, you know, obviously I was involved involved with, with writing it with, um, with many others, but I think it's one that you can remember immediately. What it also does is, shut, is put what the, the end goal is, the sustainable futures right up front and then looks at the contribution that libraries can make and the potential. So this is about a bigger picture 
And it puts libraries in that broader sustainability um, ecosystem, if you like. One thing I, I will mention, because it did come up in the feedback, um, this idea of sustainable development, that I think sometimes people think, oh, that's not for us, that's only for countries in the developing world. And I would just encourage you to look, if you're not familiar with the UN's Sustainable Development Goals, which are as relevant for Europe and North America as they are for developing countries in, say, sub-Saharan Africa or parts of Asia. So this is very much for all of us. And how to achieve this, and I think I'll, you know, I'll read this through, it's worth, worth just reading, is libraries, their workforce and their associations globally have the capability contacts, confidence and resilience to realize their potential to drive sustainable development in a fast evolving world. So that is about how libraries, how we can help you and help ourselves really be in the best position to drive that sustainable development in a world that's constantly changing. Um, and we hope that this captures that sort of powerful potential for contribution for libraries to contribute to the wider ecosystem. Thanks. I think the next slide. And let's go through um, those. If you can remember on the on the table, those three impact areas at the top. And we've gone for three, which partly is the power of three, because we think that that is easier to remember. Um, and I'll take you, let's go through one of the, each of them in turn. So first is very much that innovative, effective, ethical, professional practice. So this is really about the, um, the professional side and really developing that, the standards, the work of the professional councils and the units and the divisions, which is we know the heart of IFLA's work. And we know also that this is the, um, the resource on our website that is most consulted, those standards. So this is going to always remain an absolutely central and critical part of what um, IFLA does and supports. And uh, I think what we're trying to do is to frame it in terms, not so much just of doing, but the outcomes. This is what we want it to look like. This is, this is the outcome, the result. Um, the second one is around impactful engagement with stakeholders and communities. And this is really around a lot of our um, advocacy work, making the case for libraries globally. You know, Stephen um, leads a, an extraordinary advocacy team. They sometimes I think people are less aware of this side of our work, but through Stephen's work and his team's work, we're actually at the table at some of the big global conversations. And that the reason libraries are recognized in their role in something much, in something so broad and as part of the sustainable development goals is because the team here, drawing on experts from our volunteers, have managed to really make the case at those top tables, if you like. And this is enabling us to really help our members through our workshops get the tools, the skills, the understanding, the connections to make the case as well in their own countries. Many of you are doing it brilliantly. And again, this is a super opportunity as well to think how we exchange that best practice. So what are you doing in, you know, I know that in Ireland, they've been doing some tremendous work with the government. How do you get some of that knowledge and experience shared across the board? So this is around that advocacy tool, if you like. And then the third one is around structures and capacity for delivering development goals. And in many ways, this is partly around making sure that all libraries, all members, all associations and institutions find their, their relevance and the tools that they need within IFLA. So this is about ensuring that we can help build capacity, we can look at how you can build partnerships, um, development, training on impact, all of these things, and again, sharing best practice and ensuring that IFLA is relevant across the globe. So um, afterwards, we're going to be looking at how we can actually and how IFLA will help and support you to make this happen. But those are the three areas, the results that we're looking for, frame very much in outcomes rather than in doing. Um, 
Stephen, maybe you can go on to the next slide. And then I think I'm going to hand over to Stephen at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, I, I'm guessing a lot of you will be familiar with Menti already. Um, obviously, a key, these are consultation sessions. And, and so we're really keen to consult with you and get your feedback. Um, and so on this, but also on the impact areas afterwards, we're going to be asking you for your indications of firstly, how clear and how convincing um, you think these proposals are. But then the next question will be around providing open comments. So um, for all of you um, joining online, um, which is everyone, um, please do go to www.menti.com and then put in the code 6718. 8723, that's 6718-8723. And then, so first of all, you'll be able to give your indication of, as I said, are these clear, are these convincing? And I think once about half of you have voted, so once you get to, yeah, once about half of you have voted, we'll, we'll move on to the next question. Great, so things are beginning to come in, this looks positive. Right. So it looks like in both cases, agree is the most popular answer for the time being, with some strongly agreeing and some being a bit more neutral. Let's get a couple more answers in, but I think overall this mirrors pretty well what we were seeing yesterday, that you're the fairly convinced that these are clear and convincing, that I don't know we can we can probably still do a little bit better here. Um let's do another 10 seconds and then I'll switch to the next slide. And you'll have seen that Christine's put in the chat the um put the code in the chat if you need to use that. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. So this is where the opportunity is to provide broader comments about the, the vision, this explanation of how libraries contribute, the different ways in which the library field as a whole can contribute to this goal of ensuring sustainable futures through knowledge and information. So perhaps this might take a little bit longer to fill in fill in ideas. So I'll let you do that. So I guess just a reminder, the vision um, was uh, sustainable for futures, for all through knowledge and information. So quite, quite brief. Less is more. <laughs> That's certainly uh, consistent with a lot of the feedback we received at yesterday's um, town hall as well. Mm -hmm. Great feedback. Um, Actually, and it's good to get the feedback around things that you know we need to consider. So I guess that you know, thank you for the, the comment about empowering potential of libraries. Um, these are the sorts of things that we can consider once we collate all the feedback that we receive. I think it's it's really useful to get this feedback. And I think just one other thing to note is um, that when we come to get the kind of final version, we'll talk about the, the timelines later, I think Vicky will be, be talking about that, um, is at the moment the translations um, are, are not perfect, but we will be looking for, um, it'd be great to get comments when we come to do the final translations to just make sure we're getting really the right language because, uh, some of them are still, you know, kind of Google Translate, but almost the equivalent. So we need to uh, make sure we're getting some of the language right. <clears throat> really helpful. I think I'll, I'll move on to the next slide. We've got a, a sort of pause in the comments, so.
So Sharon, do you want to take us through the impact areas as well? Great. So um, let's talk about then the impact area. So if you like on that, um, on that slide, well, you can see it. And there is the summary in there. That's sort of the, the um, sort of strategy on a page. The vision is there, the how we do it. And then we have, we've just been through the actions at the level of the global library field. So what we're going to do is just focus a little bit on those actions taking place within IFLA, how we add value, how we can help and support. Um, so the um, the first one, let's uh, just go through the, uh, the different areas. So the first one is vibrant global professional communities. So this is really about how IFLA can work and support the um, you know, 1,100 volunteers, how we can make sure we've got really diverse, high-performing volunteer groups. What can we do to make sure that we're supporting that? We're giving you the materials that we're giving you a strategy as well that you can work with. Um, this is also something that we want to really boost our membership. We're trying to um, think about different communities of practice. Uh, some of you may know that we've created a new role, a community um, uh, practice manager who is looking at new ways to engage, bringing different groups together, some cross-cutting issues. We also want to, and I think that's you know, quite an exciting development, and, and, and um, it's Vesna who's doing that, Vesna Rukin, who is, I think, got some really, really good ideas for engagement. So we want to really get that membership much more dynamic, look at cross-cutting issues, um, support the uh, group. So that's really where I think IFLA can, can help and support. Um, the second area is um, around libraries are recognized, represented and valued as partners. And this is not just about Stephen and the advocacy team, um, it's, which is extremely effective, um, but it's also uh, ensuring that we're giving our members, our volunteers, the tools, the connections, the guidelines to really help you build those strategic partnerships and to make the case for, for libraries. But our policy work continues. You know, we're, we're, we work closely with WIPO. I know Stevens in Geneva again um, next, next week, I think. Um, and we're at the UN. We are, uh, I was at, at UNESCO in, in January. Uh, we're constantly meeting them. We're working with them. So these are really important big partnerships. And we, we're doing it, if you like, obviously for the benefit of our members and, and the communities that they serve. So this advocacy field is where we can support you and where we can make your case at those big international tables. Um, and the third one is around libraries are enabled to deliver meaningful change at all levels. And again, we will continue to invest in our regional structures to ensure that global relevance and ensuring that every voice is heard and is feeding in and that no voices are, are, are dominating. It's really important, that global relevance. And that for me is um, a particular priority. So that's uh, hugely important. We also want to make sure that we're, we're giving, uh, we're supporting capacity strengthening, and I, I think that element that is so important, that international exchange, we can all learn something. And I think, Vicky, you were saying that you always get more out of IFLA than you, than you kind of put into it, because we can always learn from every single country, however different, um, and, and learn something that we can apply to, to our own field. And I think that that's a really important part and really enriching. So um, those are the three areas where we think that IFLA can most add value um, in order to enable the results and to lead to that vision that we've talked about. Okay, thank you very much. I think let's look at the next slide. Um, and this is perhaps um, one of the most important, this is what we would call the enabler and around future-proofing IFLA um, because a lot of the things you know we're working on are not particularly visible to to our members. This is around the you know ensuring that that headquarters is well managed, um, ensuring that we are really focused on on impact measurements. And again, I think one of the the great things that we've done is um, we've created a new post. Um, and Christina 
um, I think is on the, this call as well, Christina Faberto, who is our new manager of Impact and Insight. So having that real professional in expertise in our KPIs, in our measurements, um, you know, it's Christine who says, well, that's very nice, but so what? You know, what does it mean? What are the measurements? And she's challenging us to really focus on impact. Um, but the enabler is really how we ensure, and, and again, those of you familiar with the theory of change, this is how do we optimize the conditions in IFLA to ensure that the world can succeed, that our members, our partners, our volunteers can succeed. And this is about ensuring the long-term sustainability of IFLA, both financial and strategic, ensuring we're efficient, ensuring we're delivering on all of the, the, the commitments that Vicky, the governing board, and that I made as well, around transparency and good governance, and looking at the kinds of partnerships that we need to build into the future to ensure that as we enter um, our second centenary in 2027, that we're, we're there for another 100 years, constantly evolving, remaining relevant, being impact focused, being international, being well managed, being efficient, and ensuring that you as members are proud to be part of IFLA and that we are responding to your needs. And obviously at the core of all of that is that international aspect. So the enabler maybe looks a little boring, but it's the kind of essential foundation on which we can build into the future. Um, so that I think is an important part. I think certainly, uh, Sharon, it's certainly one that our members are very keen to ensure. You know, everybody wants to ensure that IFLA is strong and has a strong future, particularly as we head towards our second uh, centenary, uh, you know, into our second 100 years, um, that we really need to have these enabling activities in place to ensure that those other activities can take place. And uh, I think particularly the international librarianship is really something that draws a lot of people to IFLA, uh, having that broad scope, that understanding of the broader issues that are occurring across the globe and how everything is so interconnected uh, in this 21st century. Sorry, I interrupted. I think it's time to hand back over to you, Stephen. No, no, thank, thank you. No, that's really, it's really important. And I, I think it's great to hear that from your sort of professional and long experience with IFLA. I'm, I've only been here for a year, so it's new to me, but but I think to get to get that perspective is really important. Thank you. Great, so um, <clears throat> we're back to Menti again. I think same, um, so it says that same exercises in the past, so a couple of people have already voted. Um, what I might um so and please do c continue with that. Hopefully, we won't have any technical hitches, which I know have affected one or two people in the meanwhile. Um, I might also encourage um Sharon and Vicky if you take a look at the Q and A. There's a a question in yes, there. Yes, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, well. I did look at the question. So we do have a question um seeking just to confirm that is seek if if we're seeking a more back office role. And if so, why, what would be the negative and positive and negative impacts? I guess I think it's exactly the opposite. I think IFLA is really striving to be out and about globally and to be focused on building very strong partnerships and demonstrating the relevance that it has to libraries and the communities that they serve. So I think that it's interesting that that's um, what you, you've thought from that. So I think we probably need to look mm -hmm. at some of our language um, as well, because certainly we're very much focused on a strong relationship with the external people being very much out and about, as, as Sharon's mentioned, at the work that we do at the UN, UESCO, WIPO is really all about strengthening the position of and of role of libraries in their communities, highlighting the work that libraries can uh, support, particularly governments and other institutions to achieve. Did you mm -hmm. want to comment as well, yes, Sharon? I do. And it's, it's probably my fault that you you heard that because I think in some ways what I was trying to do is to compare the previous um, strategy, which was quite in some ways a little ifla centric. I felt, and at the end of the day, IFLA exists for its members, and I that to me is something really important that we mustn't forget. So. It's about where where should we be focusing our efforts and, and resources and how do we better support our members and better respond to our members' needs. So I think that's probably what I was saying. So it's, it's being 
prioritizing better, sharpening our focus, listening to members more and making sure we're responding rather than sitting back and doing less. So I hope that's that's clearer. Um, but but IFLA doesn't exist for IFLA's sake. IFLA exists for its members. Is that is does that answer your question? I hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. Perhaps um, uh, if we if the person who put the question in can respond, that would be useful as well. So now we're going to uh, just your general comments about the impact areas and enablers. And I guess I can understand um, if you may want to respond to this in the in the survey because we have there's been a lot of information that we've been presenting to you today um, as well. So I have automatic lighting in my office. If I don't move enough, the lights come out. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. And then I, I guess just to say, obviously, we, we clicked on from the previous slide beforehand that I think there were slightly more people found it found the, the the impact areas and enabler convincing than clear. I think also in terms of where answers were concentrated, that does indicate we need to do a bit more about how to clarify these areas, how to make sure that they are easily understood. We're slightly better placed on convincing, but um, there's obviously scope for improvement there, but good for having comments in already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think we can sharpen up um, some of the language. So that's it's really helpful to get the feedback. And I think, too, we're very keen to get responses from uh, non-English speaking people because we really want to ensure that um, it's very clear in all of our IFLA languages what the intent of what we're saying in our strategy is as well. Oh. And certainly I think some of the feedback we got from yesterday indicated we've probably got to um, put in a little more Sort of a, a little more clarity about what we mean by sustainable development and the the, the relevance for everybody and it you know it, it, in a sense what you will see here as well is that um this kind of kind of parallels with the sustainable development goals you know the you can you can map it across and this whole idea of having a goal, having indicators underneath and actions that, that are required to to deliver that. So I hope that, um, uh, and uh, yeah, I think that that greater good is an important one. Um, that so it's a really important comment, and I think within there, that was one of the um, you know discussions that we we had to make sure that we're really emphasising not just um, <clears throat> when we talk about members, um, we add on and the communities that they serve. So it's very much uh, the idea of it's not just individual members um benefits but it's actually all all libraries are, cons are, are serving different communities and the beneficiaries if you like are the communities and society um in which you know that, that different libraries serve whether they're academic school public research parliamentary i think it's a it's an important one so if that's not coming out clearly enough we need to to look at that Okay, so maybe um, maybe we talk about the next step. So um, do thank you very much for the uh, for the feedback you've provided. And of course, this is just the commencement of the opportunity for you to provide feedback. And so we'll just take you through the next steps. Um, we do have the survey already open. And uh, we are looking for more contributions. And I guess you can look at it offline and study the, the strategy in more detail. Today, we've just shared with you the top levels. And when you go onto the IFLA website and print off or download the strategy, you'll see that there's some further pages that take you through the context of the actions and enablers that Sharon's outlined and give more depth to the work that would need to be done. So the deadline for contributions is the 11th of June, so several weeks away, um, and we do encourage you to participate as well. And if we, um, one of the things that you would have noticed on the template that Sharon shared with you is around measures of success. And of course, really, we need to measure what impact we are having um, and really be able to document what we are doing and what we're achieving. So we are looking towards developing a dashboard to measure the impact and report on the success and our achievements as well. 
what we've got on the screen is just a, uh, a sample. It's the, the dashboard cannot be determined until we've actually finalised the strategy. And of course, that's progressing as we speak, as we get feedback as well. So the IFLA team will be developing this dashboard in parallel with the, uh, the feedback time period that we have at the moment and as we, um, as we finalise the strategy in the coming months. So I, I think it's really important to show to you that that will be a key part of the new strategy is those measures of success and regular reporting against those measures of success as well. And if you've got ideas around uh, a really good metrics, we certainly would like to hear that as well. It's um, it's always fantastic to get metrics that are meaningful and, and measurable as well. So if we go then to the next slide, um, we Just have the... Add, sorry, add one thing on the metrics. And I think it's, it's important because it's about holding, in a sense, us, us accountable. But I hope it will also be a way of helping you um, have some metrics which can help you make the case for the libraries in your own with your partners and stakeholders so um, the, the metrics will be something I think really quite significant as we move forward. Thanks Sharon. And then the next slide actually gives us the roadmap going forward. So as we've mentioned, uh, the, the survey closes on the 11th of June, so just some weeks away. And as soon as it's closed, the analysis of the responses, the feedback that we've received will be progressing. And we'll be working towards, in June, a revised version of the strategy and for discussion and presentation to the governing board as well. As you would know from the different updates that have been provided over the last few months, in parallel to developing this new strategy, we are also developing a new IFLA trend report. So we need to ensure that there is alignment between the strategy and the trend report. So there'll be a cross check against the trend report as part of the process of developing the next version of the strategy. In July to September, we'll be working with the IFLA units to explore and work with that new strategy um, because we know that it's important that the strategy is has relevance to our sections. It informs the work that they are doing, provides the context and a framework as well. And of course, what will then happen with the new strategy is that it will inform the development of the next group of action plans. We will launch the new strategy at the IFLA Information Futures Summit here in Brisbane. Um, and I do hope that you'll be able to join us here in Brisbane uh, from the 30th of September to the 3rd of October when we do do the launch. And also, of course, at the summit, there will be a lot of information around the trend report. And the trend report is very much informing the structure of, of the summit as well. Um, important to note is that the new action plans will uh, initiate from the 1st of October. So that's the commencement of actually the implementation of this new strategy. So from the 1st of October. And this strategy is for the period from the 1st of October 24 through to 2029. So again, a five year time frame. And I think that's a really important thing to think about when, when providing feedback on the strategy is that this strategy is a multi-year strategy and it, it really needs to have that depth and breadth that will enable us to work across a number of years and, and covers the work, the you know, the full breadth of the work that IFLA is involved in as well. So um, I think, is there anything you wanted to add there, Sharon, before we close up? Uh, no, I think you've covered everything. So that's great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I mean, okay, so one, one thing actually is, yes, it will cover the five years, but given what's happening, we will be developing underneath this sort of shorter term, one and two year, more detailed plans. Um, so the, there will be that kind of flexibility, but we want to keep the strategy as fairly high level, really quite simple, um, something that everyone can remember. Thanks, Sharon. So um, in closing, I'd just like to say, you know, the, the governing board is particularly excited uh, about this new strategy, the opportunities that it provides, but also very keen to hear your feedback and your suggestions on how we make it a very strong strategy and a strategy that's relevant to your work as both an IFLA section member, but also as a worker in the library and information sector. So I do encourage you to respond formally uh, through the survey. 
uh, to the strategy that we have out. Remember that deadline is the 11th of June. Uh, th these sessions are being recorded, so you'll be able to come back to the session. And we also do have another two, two sessions scheduled as well. So you can tell your friends about it as well, if you wish. So um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Stephen, for managing the control room, our mentee surveys um, as well. And, uh, and thank you, Sharon, and uh, congratulations again on 12 month milestone um, as our Secretary General. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Great, thank you very much indeed. And I hope for those of you who've already responded that you can see your ideas reflected in the strategy because we really did read through all of the analyses and the comments and hopefully um, you, you can see your, your thoughts reflected there. So thank you very much and look forward to further feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.